Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we're going to talk about a naturally occurring vineyard phenomena by the name of Noble Rot. Now Noble Rot produces some of the world's finest dessert wines, things like Sauterne, Tokai, and Spätlese Riesling. But when we think about the terms Noble Rot, it sounds like kind of a strange and unusual process, and it is. Well, today's a special day for me. It's actually my 56th birthday, and who doesn't like a sweet treat on their birthday? I know I do. So when we think about sweet wines and we think about dessert wines, we have to kind of delineate the two. So a sweet wine is just that. It's a wine with the presence of sugar. It's a sweet wine. But when we think about a dessert wine, it's significantly more elegant than that. Yes, it has the presence of sugar, but it also has the significant concentration of flavors. And noble rot is one way we achieve those concentrations of flavors. So let's think about grapes that are hanging in the vineyard. They are super ripe, a little bit past ripe. Let's say it's a late harvest situation. So in the Northern Hemisphere, think late October, early November, and the grapes are sitting on the vines and they're starting to raisin just a bit. Well, there happens to be a waterway adjacent to the vineyard, and that waterway pushes moisture in the form of fog across that vineyard. Well, along comes a mold spore by the name of Botrytis cinerea, and that fungus actually attaches to the skins of the grapes themselves. Because the mold spore actually perforates the grape just slightly, now it allows some of the water that's inside that grape globe to actually evaporate, further concentrating the flavors inside that grape. So let's think about a healthy grape globe. What are the components inside that pulp? Well, inside we have acid, we have sugar, we have water, and of course it's encapsulated by skin, which could potentially introduce tannins to the situation. So when Botrytis cinerea comes in and perforates that grape globe a little bit and we lose water, now the sugar and acid content compared to the water ratio is much higher and the flavors are concentrated. Now the magic of noble rot is it doesn't happen every year. All the conditions have to be absolutely perfect. We have to be in a late harvest situation. We have to have the grapes raisin a little bit. We have to have botrytis uh, spores in the area, and we have to have the moisture and act upon those grapes. Now, if the moisture lasts too long, then we're not in a noble rot situation, but we're actually in a gray rot situation, which will ruin the harvest. So this is a very tricky type of thing, and it has actually been going on for millenniums in a lot of different areas. So it's fascinating how it works, but I can tell you in the end, the concentration, the elegance, the beauty and the depth in these type of noble rot dessert wines are absolutely phenomenal. Even if you don't like sweet wines, you will love the complexity and character of these wines. So we talked about some of the, the common noble rot areas. Well, I picked one that's a little bit off the beaten path for you today and it actually hails from South Africa. So this wine comes to us from a vintner by the name of Boschendal, and Boschendal calls this their reserve collection Von de Or, which kind of pays tribute to some of the French lineage in making these type of wines. So let's take a look at this wine and see what we might think. Well, the first thing that we see is the wine itself is very, very deep, dark gold, actually bordering on brown. And this is from the concentrations of those different components. If we swirl to liberate the aromas, the first thing that comes out of the glass is really just a blast of different aromas. And it comes to us really because there's a, a hydrocarbon that comes off these noble rot uh, wines, and it's one called phenol acetyl aldehyde, and it's a very aromatic chemical. And it kind of comes across a little bit as honey and beeswax and ginger. So we're getting all those type of aromas off of this wine. Now let's take a sip.
When this rolls across the palate, of course on the front side, all I get is really just fresh honey squeezed right out of the comb. It's really beautiful on the front side. Then we get some fruit flavors that kick in. Everything from uh, apricot to a little bit of pineapple to certainly a lychee flavor, all kind of dancing on the front side of the palate. Now what's different and what separates a dessert wine from a sweet wine is certainly the acidity. So when it hits mid palate, we do feel the acidity in this wine, which allows it to balance and not cloy on the palate and really gives it a significant elegance. On the back side of the palate, that beautiful honeysuckle and fresh honey flavor just continues across the, the palate. It, it lingers. It's really beautiful. So I'm going to get back and enjoy a little bit more of this wine, which actually can be paired quite a bit with fresh fruits, all types of different desserts. And I'm going to have a little bit of that here when I have my birthday cake. And I ask that you come back next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time. Thank you.